Ugh. Let's talk about disasters, unmitigated failures, fragrances that I bought and I was hoping, oh, this is gonna be awesome, I'm gonna love it. And it came in and I gave it the old whiff Rooney and ugh, oh, my heart, all that money. Yeah, 15 fragrances that uh, were failures. I knew right away that I was gonna regret these purchases when I put the nose to them. That's what blind buys get you sometimes. Sometimes they get you good, sometimes they get you bad. Hey friends, Ashley with Gin Sense. I uh, forgot to introduce myself. Hope you're doing well. Let's jump into it, guys. Let's check out these 15 failures, these, these blind buy mistakes. Shameless self-promotion time, gents10 is the code for twistedlily.com. Use that to save yourself 10% off the entire website, everything they got on there. And they're adding all kinds of new fragrances and new fragrance brands. So check them out every so often uh, because they might have something on there you think is awesome and you've been looking for. Save yourself a little bit of money. Now, as I said, guys, uh, blind buys don't always screw the pooch. Actually, most of the times they work out pretty well, but sometimes you'll take a look at a note breakdown, maybe even read a review or two, Go ahead and pull the trigger and it just does not work out. Or other times, because you have a YouTube channel and you like to cover new releases, you might buy them when they're brand new before anybody has had a chance to really talk about them. And then you find out, oops, it sucks. Part of the gig, part of the gig. So we've got here 10 designers, five niche, a little mixture. Let's kick it off with niche. Yeah, let's do this guy. Uh, because he's staring at me in his beautiful orange bottle, which is my favorite color, by the way. It is Little Italy. Oops, I wouldn't have cared if I dropped it and broke it just now, honestly. But yeah, Little Italy, bond number nine. Like I said, I love the orange bottle. Look at it, look at it, beautiful. And would you believe it that it has orange as one of the notes in the fragrance? Yes. Now this note breakdown looks like it would be impossible to screw up. And that's what I thought. It's got Clementine, Mandarin orange, neroli, musk, even a little bit of grapefruit. How can you screw that up? Citrus and neroli, which go hand in hand, and then musk, such an easygoing base note. I even saw reviews of Little Italy before I bought this where people were like, oh my God, this stuff is rank, it sucks. And I thought, no way, dude, nah, you're wrong and I will prove it by buying it. That didn't work out. Turns out it does suck. Yeah, Little Italy's not very good. Let's relive Little Italy here very quickly. Yep, yep, still sucks. So here's the problem with Little Italy. When you first smell it, especially off a tester strip, it's worse off skin, but you get citrus and you think, ooh, here we go, here we go, getting started. Get that orange, clementine, mandarin orange, little bit of a, a green feel on the edges, and then this skankiness comes out. Now, I don't mean it in an animalic way. I mean, it just smells off. It smells like there's something wrong with it. I don't know if it's the musk, I don't know what it is, but something in here comes out and just smells like it has turned. And suddenly that citrus that was starting to come out and smell very fresh gets this funky undertone that smells completely and wholly unpleasant and synthetic. So Little Italy, big fail. I'm gonna move on because otherwise I'm gonna keep talking about that for like 30 minutes. I wanna get this one out of the way also. Wanted Tonic from Zaro. This fragrance I paid more than full retail for because I got it from Europe and I thought it was gonna be pretty good. I put my eggs in the Zaro basket, the Zaro Wanted basket because Wanted by Night was good. The original Wanted was okay for a discounted price. And then this came out and just crushed me. It's not that it smells offensive. It doesn't smell off. It doesn't smell like it's turned like Little Italy. Instead, it's just extremely boring and nondescript. It feels like they put zero effort into the fragrance and they just said, hey, perfumer, make me something that smells like a gem fragrance, please. Would you like anything to set it apart? Anything interesting, anything different? No, thanks. So my big issue here is I spent $100 for it. So yeah, 
you know, bad me, ooh, I made a mistake, I screwed up. If you get it at 30 bucks or whatever, then it's fine. But there's nothing about that that's really redeemable. It's not the type of fragrance that has anything going on where you're gonna remember it. And if people don't remember your fragrance at all, and if you can't remember your fragrance five minutes after you sprayed it on because it's so boring, what's the point in owning it? After that, Loewe 7 Platinum. Now this one I know has some lovers. Some people really dig this fragrance. And when I bought it, I was assuming I would be one of those people that I would be singing its praises and I would go, hey guys, this one flies under the radar a little bit, but you gotta check it out. Then I got it in, sprayed it on and just thought to myself, holy crap. I would never wear that, ever, ever. I know, like I said, that some people really like that and some people do rock that out and about, but the scent profile of that one is just not something I feel like I would ever want to smell like. This one though has an interesting combination of mandarin orange, mint, ginger, and incense. And the way that it melds together to me is just not very pleasant. It's like a strange syrupy ginger where that that poppiness, that brightness from the ginger is gone. Now, some people would say it smells like a more realistic ginger, but again, to me, it just doesn't smell very pleasant. And then that incense adds this bit of smokiness that just doesn't work. So that one for me, big whiff. Next up, a fragrance from a house that I bought three fragrances from many years ago and did not like any of them. So I haven't bought anything from them since. I'm sure they have some absolutely killer fragrances out there and feel free to go ahead and leave those in the comments below, the ones that I definitely need to check out. But it's uh, Alexander J and the fragrance is Saphir Oud Funny. Now it's not that the fragrance smells bad per se, it's just absolutely not the type of fragrance that I would ever wear once again. It has an interesting note breakdown. It has coconut and toffee and tonka and vanilla and oud, along with leather and alang alang. Like there's a lot going on here. And it comes across to me quite feminine with the coconut being a little bit too pronounced for my liking. A bit powdery, a bit floral, a bit woody, a bit, a lot of things, a lot of bits. And I also absolutely despise the bottle. And I know that's not a big deal, uh, but it does look very cheesy to me with this sort of like wire spring that's around the edges of the bottle. I don't know. That's petty. So we'll keep it moving. Explorer Ultra Blue is next, matches my shirt. Same thing going on here as with Wanted Tonic. Paid retail, fragrance itself is actually like $25. That's what it smells like it should be. So it's one of those deals where you get it in, you smell it and you go, man, that is not worth what I paid in terms of the price versus quality. Again though, just like Wanted Tonic, you pay 25, 30 bucks, something like that, and then it's completely fine. So this one has a lot to do with just the price that I paid for it and hoping and expecting that it would be a little bit more than what it is. What it is, is a perfectly serviceable uh, spring, summer, mainly summer, casual fragrance, sporty type scent, refreshing, uh, citrusy, little aquatic, but ultimately boring once again. After that, Italian Zest from Dolce & Gabbana, light blue Italian Zest. This one I was really hyped for. I don't know why, mainly I guess the yellow coloration of the fragrance and the Italian dressing looking font on the front of the bottle. I thought, hey, that looks cool. That might be super refreshing and really high quality and this lively citrus and I was, I was hyped. Then I got it in and the citrus smelled just cheap and janky and it did not at all continue with the trend that Light Blue O Intense had set, you know, or the expectation that Light Blue O Intense had set where it was gonna, you know, keep taking Light Blue further and, and really ramping things up and, and breathing more life into the line. Instead, to me, it just set it back. Oh, Italian zest. Back to Niche, Kalan from Parfums de Marley. I can see some of the Parfums de Marley fanboys now getting out their pitchforks. Ooh. How dare you say that about Kalan? It's exquisite. That fragrance had gotten a lot of hype. People saying it was sick, so I was really looking forward to it. Unfortunately, it just uh, didn't work out for me so well as it did for other people. So that kind of sucks when that happens. So with this fragrance, I was not expecting it to smell how it smelled, I guess is the easiest way to describe it, because this one was quite a bit drier and earthier 
and a little bit dirtier than I was anticipating. And the way the scent came across was not much to my liking. It actually reminded me a little bit of Tom Ford's Noir Anthracite, but I actually like Anthracite more. Back to designer, Lunarosa O Sport. I like Prada. I like the Lunarosa line. I was hoping that O Sport, which comes in a stupid bottle because it's a different size than all the other fragrances in the Lunarosa line, but I digress. I was hoping that this would be a really high quality, fresh fragrance for summer with a good amount of class to it that you could get for cheaper from discounters. That's what my hope was. Now, some of those things that I hope this would be, it was, was cheaper, uh, at least cost per milliliter than the other Prada Lunarosa fragrances, but it didn't have enough character for me, it just kind of got lost in the mix, lost in the sauce. In my opinion, Lunarosa Osport, the worst one in the line, least interesting, the last one I would reach for, and it kind of let me down. I mean, the fragrance is competently done, but there's not much to get excited about there. And then this one, Champagne Blue. Now this fragrance I had heard was an alternative to uh, Blue de Chanel. Not a surprise, it's Champagne Blue, so kind of get what they're going for here. And then the bottle's really interesting looking because it comes uh, all sealed up and you have to take off this foil and it's like you pop the cap as if it's an actual champagne bottle. So you're thinking to yourself, oh man, that's pretty cool. If this is a really nice clone, then this is gonna be really sweet. It's not too expensive. The presentation is definitely different. Then you spray it on and it just smells really inexpensive, like a dollar store blue fragrance. It's hairsprayish. The quality is not there, uh, much lower than our moth, for example. So there's really no reason to go for this. So that was a letdown, and that happens with clone fragrances from time to time. They can't all be hits. Some of them will be complete crap, and that one's pretty crappy. Back to niche. Now, this fragrance I do not hate, but I was let down, and it is Fan Your Flames from Nishane. Of all the fragrances that I own from the house currently, this one is my least favorite. Now, some of you out there are gonna say, no, man, you're wrong. Fan Your Flames is awesome. One of the best tobacco fragrances out there. It does things differently and I love it. But for me, I just never have really wanted to reach for it all that much. I gave it some wears, I gave it some tries, but it really didn't grow on me. Now it has your typical Nishane quality here. It's an extrait to parfum. It does do things a little bit differently. Uh, you can see the notes on the bottom here. It's got coconut, it has rum and tobacco. So yeah, another fragrance that features coconut prominently in this list. It's not a note that I'm in love with, unless it's used in a very particular way, I guess. That's just personal taste. And then it's got a good amount of woodiness underneath it all. I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting, maybe more sweetness, but that one just has not quite done it for me. We have five to go and this is taking a while, so let's speed things up. Next up, uh, Police Gentleman. This bottle looks horrifically cheap. The cap, oh, terrible. Atomizer, really bad. I bought this hoping it would be a bit of a hidden gem. This one is pretty weak off my skin, not much performance at all to write home about, and the atomizer is complete garbage. Check it out. Uh, it just does this little weak puff. I don't know how it looks on camera. Maybe it looks better than it actually is. Gonna have to take my word for it. That fragrance you have to kind of douse yourself with to be able to pick it up at all. It's this light, woody, semi-sweet nothingness. Really poorly done, very inexpensive smelling. Some police fragrances are decent for the price, not so bad, that's not one of them. Now, another cheapy, Nautica. Nautica Blue. Yes, it is a classic and I hate it. I bought this originally many, many years ago, many years ago from Walmart and it was a little 15 milliliter, I think, because I was wanting something new and that was in my budget at the time. So that's, that's what I bought. Never was a fan of this even back then. So uh, yeah, I have it because it's a classic fragrance, but I think it smells pretty bad, very synthetic. If you're going for a nice, fresh aquatic scent, there's a lot of other things out there you should get instead of that that are much more interesting. Nautica Voyage, for example. Back to niche. This is from Montal. It's Mukhalit. 
I don't know if I pronounced that right, sorry. This one I was very excited about because it has a strawberry note and I was interested to see how Montal would pull that off. The answer is they really don't. They really don't pull it off. It is so sickeningly sweet off my skin. It is almost completely unwearable. I rarely ever, ever, ever will talk about a fragrance as headache inducing because I think most of the time when you say, ooh, I got a headache, it's somebody being overly dramatic. But with this one, if you told me you sprayed it on and it gave you a headache, I would just nod in agreement and say, yeah, that sounds about right. There's just not really anything that can save that one for me. When I smell the opening, it is so overwhelmingly, sickeningly, synthetically, chemically cheap and sweet. I hate it. Ugh. Two last fragrances, Sean Mendez signature is the next one we're going to talk about. This fragrance actually got sent to me, so I didn't buy this. This was years ago when this was brand new, brand spanking new. They reached out to a bunch of YouTubers and I stupidly accepted. I mean, it's not their fault that they were offering it, so it's whatever, but I got this in, I sprayed it on and I did not like it at all. So I didn't do a video on it because I would have just said, hey, uh, I hate it, thanks. Very feminine, um, synthetically sweet, bit of a hairspray feel to this one as well. Actually more than a bit of a hairspray feel, <laughs> a decent amount. And the company reached out to me and they said, hey, I noticed uh, you know, other YouTubers have put out their reviews on this, where's your review? And I responded and said, well, I can do one if you want me to, but I'm going to say, that I really, 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 really don't like it. And then they responded with, oh, that's okay, don't worry about it, thanks. Last but not least, Hardwell Eclipse. Yes, Hardwell Eclipse, the fragrance of famous DJ producer, Hardwell. So I was listening to BPM when this came out, a Sirius XM satellite radio station that has uh, dance music EDM on it. And they were talking about Hardwell's new fragrance and they were saying, oh man, it smells so amazing, it's so awesome. And I was like, wait, Hardwell has a fragrance, what? So I went and bought it Then I got it in and I realized it sucks. Now it's not the worst thing in this list and actually the opening, like the initial four or five minutes of this smells completely fine. It's not bad. Citrusy and sweet, pretty easy going, very likable in that initial blast. Then after that, it all falls apart. So with this one, part of me actually doesn't mind that I have it because it's a little bit cool. It's kind of like a little gimmick fragrance or something. And then the other part of me goes, uh, yeah, but it was a complete waste of money. I almost feel like with this one, when they were doing the evaluation, that they had the fragrance and they said, hey, Hardwell, smell this. And he went, yeah, that's not bad. Let's let's just do that one. Yep. Now Hardwell sees this video and responds below. Hey, a-hole, I actually love it. All right, there we go. 15 fragrances that were complete disasters for one reason or another. Let me know in the comments some of the blind buys that completely sucked for you. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. I'll see you guys later.